that part. You can get all that thought in there. Uh, what's he saying? He's saying uh, that here he, Jesus had just uh, healed, remember, the, the man who was at the pool of Bethesda? Uh, said, get up, take up your bed, and walk. And, uh, and he did, and the Pharisees said, well, he can't be from God because uh, he's doing something on the Sabbath that you're not supposed to be doing. You're not supposed to be doing any work, any labor, any caring. You know, you pick, they pick up. And they miss what God is saying. He must love Jesus immensely to let him, by word, help a man walk. They miss it all. The goodness of God, the Father, is always verifying what Jesus is doing. He's always doing that. You know, he makes mud, puts it on a guy's ass, and says, go wash the pool. doing the work of the Father, and so the Father is always blessing this work. He's the great witness to what Jesus is in the world, and, and sometimes I like this line in the first reading that Diane read for us, you know, why? What does he say about uh, the Lord said to Moses, I see how stiff-necked this people is. You know what? Have you ever had a stiff neck? There's only one way of seeing what's in front of you. You don't Pretty hard, right? <laughs> you know, that's, that's uh, yesterday I went to get my driver's license renewed. That's an experience. <laughs> and the first thing you have to learn is patience. If you don't have patience, you're going to be, you're going to suffer through the whole ordeal. <laughs> because you know as soon as you get there, you're going to have to sit <laughs> and wait for the numbers. And here I hear this number, 72, and I've got 18. <laughs> and I'm either I missed the boat or I've got a long way to wait. And of course I did, you know, but I pulled out my rosary and said, right. And then when you get up to the person who's waiting on you, the temptation is to take out all your frustration at that poor person, you know. You can just see it, the people who go up there, you know, there's no humor, nothing. And so I was determined, I can't let this happen. And so I went up and I had the best time with the person who went there. You know, just, and, and God is always saying to us, I'm, I'm with you, I'm, I'm not abandoning you. I mean, I want you to look at life differently. I want you to see it from my point of view. And once you do, something marvelous happens. One of the great uh, ministries that uh, you get to do when you're a, a senior priest, you know, means old, <laughs> and is, uh, you get called to uh, help in parishes because there aren't enough. It used to be that there were three or four priests in the parish, probably were here at St. James at one time too. And so they took care of their own parishes, you know, but. Now, if there, there are children, and there are children, whether they're going to religious ed or going to their old schools, you're constantly getting called. Yesterday I went to a parish and, and uh, to hear the children's confessions, you know, and there were about 12 of us, at least. And it was marvelous. You know, when, when you sit there and and the youngster comes up and there's this, you know, for some of them it's a sense of anxiety at first. But when you are there in their presence, there's a, an experience of reverence. Because somebody, that young person, is not thinking about themselves. They start off that way. But when they confess their faults, it's about how they relate to others. How maybe they're not going to church. And you are in the presence of God. And it's, it would be easy, you know, to say to somebody, why did you do that? 
you know, to focus on the absence of God. But in truth, it's their reverence, their respect for God that allows them to look at themselves differently and, and to bear their soul. That's an, that is a, an awesome moment, especially for a priest, because we're the ones that are supposed to be preaching about the presence of God. And I think that's what God is doing for us. He's nourishing us with those confessions, those uh, reverential moments, and telling us that He's really there. Not to be stiff-necked in the world changes our whole way of looking at ourselves, other people, at life, and, uh, and recognizing God. And that's what I think Jesus is saying. Once you begin to look at life from God's point of view, gosh, it's beautiful. The Lord needs it. Yes.